So entertain me here for a moment. I'm going to try to convince you that you should run for president. <laughs> I've heard you say that before. Okay. Well, I did a whole segment on it, and I, I enjoyed it very much as I did it. I, I think I showed you. Somebody took a picture of me. It's so interesting. I showed you that picture when I was watching you doing that, and I couldn't believe it. I cannot thank you enough for that. Well, here. So let me make my case for those who haven't seen it, because I actually think <clears throat> it, it's important. So you look at Bernie Sanders in 2016 and you look at Bernie Sanders in 2020 and he definitely sparked something. He sort of awakened a generation. He ushered in this new wave of a New Deal kind of politics that reminded people that this is possible. We don't have to always be permanently stuck in the Bill Clinton model or the Barack Obama model. Uh, there's something better out there. And it really got a lot of people involved in politics. Now, after 2020, you look at the way everything unfolded, and I could sit here all day and do the sour grapes thing, and I could give everybody the million and one rationalizations as to why Bernie went down. 2016, the DNC was involved. There was definitely some fuckery behind the scenes, to say the very least. 2020, I like to call it Bloody Monday, when you had Mayor Pete and Amy Klobuchar, they all dropped out on the same day, endorsed Bernie, uh, endorsed, I excuse me, I wish, happened. <laughs> uh, yeah, endorsed <laughs> Biden, and, and the media also went in and, and really went for the jugular and compared him to Fidel Castro, and you want the U.S. to be like Cuba. So I, I could do that all day. But when I look back at it now, he sparked something. It's very important. But now the torch needs to be passed. And the question is, to who? Um, for as much as I love Bernie, he does have some blind spots, in my opinion. One of those blind spots is that he's been in Washington, D.C. since roughly 1784. <laughs> and when you're in D.C. that long, even with the outsider credentials that he has, through osmosis, you sort of become part of that system. And so he thinks of Joe Biden first and foremost as my friend Joe Biden, even though I have these gentlemen's ideological disagreements with him. And that's the main problem, too, is that it's not gen gentlemen's disagreements. You're talking about the Iraq war. That's a war crime. You're talking about the Patriot Act. You're talking about a, a plethora of policies which have honestly led to the downfall and the destruction of this country in many respects. The reason why I think you're the heir apparent is because you're not Bernie Sanders. You have agreements with him. And on, on many policy issues, you're the same, but you actually offer people something in a particularly nihilistic age and moment. You offer people something that's different than any other politician that I've ever seen. Now, look, I came up with not just only progressive politics and Noam Chomsky. I was also part of the new atheist movement in a way with Richard Dawkins and the whole like condescending to religious people like, oh, you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you wizard in the sky? <laughs> Idiot. Like I was part of that whole thing, right? But, you know, as I've grown and, and I look back at a lot of that stuff, I, I think I, I cringe a little bit and I think well, it's obviously more complex than that, more sophisticated than that. And I wasn't giving it its due diligence. And so you touch and touch something in people that honestly is more of a, like a spiritual thing. It's more of like an energy thing where people need to feel like there's something deeper in life. There's a, there's a, a greater purpose. And it's not the same kind of thing that the fundamentalist evangelical Christians do where they make it about this doctrine of like hate. Yours is like, no, we can work on a collective project together, which moves us towards a better future. So given the fact that you have the, you know, the economic credentials, the populist credentials, the outsider credentials mixed in with that extra element, which I don't see from anybody else on the political landscape, no matter how many much I might like some other people in the political landscape, I think that's why it's it's your moment. And I think you should run in 2024. <laughs> well, first of all, just on a personal level, uh, respecting your intelligence and your political perspicacity as much as I do, uh, please know I'm honored to hear you say that. And I thank you. Um, and the fact that you not only feel it, but are willing to uh, say it publicly the way you have and the way you just did, I'm really honored by that. Um, you and I and others have been in a deep conversation over and, and all of your listeners too. Everybody is asking ourselves, first of all, what needs to be done? Not first who needs to do it, but what needs to be done? And I think there is a growing consensus about that. And I'm part of that consensus, definitely. In terms of the who, um, I think that my uh, asking myself that is as deep as anybody asking themselves that. Um, I think there is a spear. All that the person running is, is the tip of the spear. But, you know, you look at something like Christian Smalls, an individual does have an important part to play. Um, I, I think of myself as assessing, listening. I said to somebody the other day, my ear is to the ground, my eyes to the sky. Um, I, the fact that someone like yourself says what you're saying, um, 
that you were saying the other day, and I really agree with you, the comments that you were making about how an elite, even a, a left elite, shouldn't be anointing someone. Mm -hmm. It should be coming from the mm -hmm. grassroots. It should be coming from the heart of whoever feels called to do it. Um, I know the brutality of the experience, and I know the exhilaration of the experience. I feel that what I have learned from being in the belly of that beast has taught me a lot, a lot. Um, I know that there are people such as yourself and yourself and others who would know what needs to be done now. Um, and um, I'm in deep listening and... Um, I, I do know this. At this point in history, and I think who runs for president is always important, who wins the presidency is always important. At this point in history, particularly with what will be confronting us in 2024, whether it's Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis, um, this is not a moment to clutter the field. If you do it, you do it well, you do it impeccably, um, you do it energetically, you do it powerfully, you do it strongly. If I feel called in my heart, and that would my whether or not I'm called in my heart has a lot to do with such things as what you just said. I, I don't in any way underestimate how important that is. Thank you. Um, but I also know, and I've shared with, with you as well, um, there have to be a lot of people who have made it clear uh, they're in. And uh, we were in a conversation the other day, actually. Uh, and somebody said, I want to help you get your voice out there. <laughs> no, no, if we, do, if we do it, we're doing it. Uh, if we do it, we're doing it. And if we do it, we're going to do it to offer to the American people uh, a legitimate option for agenda and character and ethics and perspective on our economy, on our government, and on America's place in the world um, that could actually seriously and powerfully interrupt the status quo, much along the way uh, that FDR did. FDR said we must take drastic measures if necessary to write. I see American, I see American democracy is like a ship that's listing. Mm -hmm. And this incremental approach to making things a little bit better here, a little bit better there is not making fundamental change. Um, the Republicans, obviously, the way the party sits right now, not every Republican, but the core of the party right now is such disdain for the suffering of masses of people. Mm. The Democratic Party, even the corporatists, like to wring their hands and say, we'd like to ameliorate the suffering, alleviate the distress. And what, what Franklin Roosevelt represented, and what I feel we need to represent, and what we would certainly represent if I run, is no, alleviating the distress of people is not enough. You must make fundamental economic reform. You must be willing to challenge those underlying forces, at this point mainly corporate forces, whose behavior, if allowed to continue the way it is, inevitably creates more distress and perpetuates more patterns of suffering. So if we do run, we're running, uh, providing uh, the American people with an option of fundamental economic reform. And I just, I, I don't think, and I think we need to get past the left versus right mm. uh, dichotomy. It's really the system versus the people. Mm. It's not the left versus the right. I think this left versus right thing is almost like a, a purse snatcher's trick Mm. Make right. people think you're you're the problem. You're the problem. No, 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 no. You're both being screwed by the same people. Yeah. They're the problem. And I think more and more people are beginning to see that. Whether I'm, I'm a person and whether my running is is the best option for bringing that forward, I don't know yet. Um, it is. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, it means it well. Means a let lot me, me let me just add to what you just said because I think, in a sense, you actually give the Democrats a little bit too much credit by saying that they want to ameliorate the suffering because they want to ameliorate suffering for some, but they also have a lot of hate and contempt for much of the country, and so you do have this trick of trying to convince people that no, actually, the greatest, your biggest problem and the threat to your life, and this comes from, you know, all three of the cable news nets, is that person who disagrees with you on X, Y, or Z issue. And so one of the things that I think is essential about you and your perspective is that you, you know, obviously people are complicated and good, bad, and everything else, but you actually believe in the American people. And that's the foundation of a populist is, you know, these elites have 
had control for a while now and it hasn't gone so well. So maybe we actually should recommit to democracy, to actual democracy and all of the messiness and discomfort that that does entail. When you just said that it hasn't gone so well, I think we need to take it the next step. It has been a spectacular failure. Mm. The last 40 years of the neoliberal economic and political um, establishment has been a spectacular aberrational failure. We are six inches from the cliff uh, on the state of our democracy, uh, on the state of income inequality, on the state of our environment, even on the state of foreign policy. Look at what's happening with Russia. And I think that's really what we need to see with malice towards no maturity for all. You guys have, you have not just not gone so well. This group needs to step aside now and the people need to step in. Um, Eisenhower said the American mind at its best is both liberal and conservative. There are high minded liberals, there are high minded conservatives. Neither one of them have too much, uh, too much sway within either major political party right now. But there is, I believe, a new consensus to be drawn that does begin with the recognition that where we are is intolerable. Where we are is unacceptable. For us, you know, when, when they talk about like we're fringe people on the left, like it's French to suggest that my grandchildren should be able to breathe. It's French to suggest that uh, an every American child should should be educated. Like it's French to suggest <clears throat> that people should be able to have health care when what they're calling fringe positions is considered moderate positions in most Western democracies that are doing much better than we are. In most European countries, it's assumed uh, that they're going to have universal health care. It's assumed in, in most advanced democracies and all the advanced democracies, as a matter of fact, they either have free higher education or very, very inexpensive. Americans have been trained to expect too little. They've been propagandized to protect those who have no interest in protecting them. Mm -hmm.